Welcome. For Gauss's law, we have three main symmetries that are going to help us understand what symmetries our charge distributions have and what symmetries then our Gaussian surfaces should use. So when we are talking about our symmetries, we are talking about the symmetries of the charge distribution. So if I have this, this is a sphere. This would be a charge distribution of a sphere. And ignoring any sort of right lines and things like that, I can rotate this in this direction or this direction or this direction, and it still looks like a sphere. Contrasting to if I have this cylinder, if I rotate it this way versus this way versus this way, it will look a little bit different. So the test for spherical is it remains unchanged when I right, rotate about any axis. I can rotate a sphere however I want. Now, if I'm talking about the charge or force that a f should feel at a point P, what I'm saying is then if I rotate this, it's not going to affect what electric field P feels because this sphere will look exactly the same to P. But if I move this sphere, it will have a different field at P because, right, it'll be a different distance, different direction, things of that sort. So it remains unchanged when it's rotated, but it changes field It is translated, which means moved in any direction. So these are our tests for spherical symmetry. Examples are, of course, sp spheres filled or hollow. Points, point particles actually have spherical symmetry, and then we can have, right, semi-hollow spheres. Pretty normal what we expect for spherical and spherical symmetry. Then, right, what we really care is what we get from the symmetry. So, Going through a couple of things, right, the consequences of having spherical symmetry is that our electric field is only a function of r. We don't care about any angles, right, and we want to be, of course, in spherical coordinates for spherical symmetry. And then our electric field is only in the r hat direction. So what we're saying is we're saying that our electric field is the electric field in the r direction. As a function of r, we can have a little r hat as well. So what shapes have the same symmetry as a sphere? Spheres have the same symmetry as a sphere. Sounds crazy, but it sounds easy. So we want to use spheres as our Gaussian surface. So, so for spheres, they don't have to be infinite spheres, right? They can be finite spheres and they still will have this spherical symmetry. For a cylinder, if we have a infinite cylinder or there are near infinite cylinder for this one, right? Then I can rotate it in this way and it still looks the same to you, still looks the same at point P. But if I rotate it this way, or if I rotate it this way, then it looks different for point P. So one test is that it remains unchanged it's rotated along one axis. And then if this is a truly infinite cylinder or if it's close enough to an infinite cylinder that we can assume so, then I can move it along this way, along the same axis that I just rotated, and it looks the same. But I can't move it up and I can't move it down. 
So I can rotate it. It remains unchanged when it's rotated along the one axis and when it's translated along the same axis. And it changes when it is translated or rotated in a different direction. Or along a different axis. So, examples of things with cylindrical symmetry. are infinite wires, infinite cylinders, and they can be right either thin wires or they can have some thickness as a cylinder, right? And we can have, of course, right, semi-hollow or coaxial also have this. So just to show, Oftentimes, it's good to look at our infinite cylinder from this face view as along with this side view. So we oftentimes want both perspectives when we're drawing this. And so what I can do with this cylinder is that I can rotate it in this way, but I cannot rotate it this way, I cannot rotate it this way. And I can translate it this way without it changing if it's truly infinite, but I cannot translate it up, I cannot translate it down for this point P over here. So that is our cylindrical symmetry. What we get from this So the books aren't often very good with this, just calling every R R. We are going to try to use lowercase r to mean a three-dimensional R. For our cylindrical symmetry, we want to use, of course, cylindrical coordinates, capital R T Z a two-dimensional radius. In that case, E is only a function of capital R, the two-dimensional radius. And our E is only in the two-dimensional radius direction. So what we can say is we can say that our electric field is E capital R as a function of the two-dimensional radius in this capital R direction. So for our spheres as Gaussian surface, we want them to have, of course, the same center. For us, we want to use cylinders as our Gaussian surface. And they need to share the same axis. For our planar, we kind of got to pretend this was infinite and it looked kind of OK when it was infinite. With a two-dimensional plane, we kind of have to pretend a little bit better. So this is a two-dimensional plane. We're going to imagine it goes infinitely in this direction, in this direction, in this direction and back towards me, that it is finite up and down. So we can look at it from this perspective. We can also look at it from this perspective. So in this perspective, one crazy thing about an infinite plane is that if it's actually infinite, it doesn't matter whether it's a square shape or a circular shape. Because right, the only difference between a square and a circle are the edges. And if it's actually infinite, it doesn't have any edges. So with this planar, I could actually rotate it in this way without it changing its shape, without it changing what effect it would have on point P. But I can't rotate it this way. I can't rotate it this way. So it remains unchanged when it is rotated perpendicular to the plane it's infinite in.
And then for this two-dimensional plane, a little bit easier to kind of see it this way. If it's actually infinite this way, then I can translate it this way. I can translate it this way. If it's infinite this way, I can translate it this way. I can translate it this way. So then I can also translate in the two directions it's infinite in. This changes when, of course, I try to rotate along a different axis or when I try to translate in the direction it's not infinite in. So some examples of this is we can have infinite plates. We can have infinite slabs. The difference being for our slab, we actually recognize some of the thickness that it has. And something interesting happens for both the plates and the slabs. Our capacitors, or parallel plate capacitors at least, have planar symmetry because they are two infinite plates or two infinite slabs on top of each other. Now, what we get from it is that the electric field is only a function of the direction we're not infinite in and only in the direction we're not infinite in. And the electric field equals zero at the exact midway point. So an example, if we are infinite in x and y, then our electric field is in the z as a function of z. One other example is if we are infinite in yz, then right, it would be x is our last measurement, so the electric field is in x as a function of x. And then lastly, for our Gaussian surface, we want to use a cylinder with one cap along the center line. So in our sketch organized solve, we show a little bit more of how to do this with the planar. So this is how to test for which symmetry we have. Once we test for which symmetry we have, it tells us how we can use our Gaussian surfaces to do this and what we get in order to justify why our Gaussian integrals become trivial.